Chicago, all Lake Michigan and Illinois, is among the largest cities in the U.S. famed for its bold architecture. It has a skyline punctuated by skyscrapers such as the iconic John Hancock Center, 1,451 feet, Willys Tower formerly the Sears Tower, and the Neo-Gothic Tribune Tower. The city is also renowned for its museums, including the Art Institute of Chicago with its noted Impressionist and Post-Impressionist works. Chicago is famous for being friendly to tourists. The Midwest, specifically Chicago, had an overwhelmingly positive score. Not surprisingly, New York was ranked as the second most tourist-hating city in the country. Chicago is one of the great American cities, filled to the brim with history, rich culture, unique art, attractions, and plenty more. It's the perfect place to visit on a solo trip, especially since it's a very walkable city with great public transportation options. What is Chicago known for? Some of the many things Chicago is famous for are Chicago-style hot dogs, Chicago-style deep-dish pizza, Maxwell Street Polish sausage, jazz music, and 1920 gangsters, for example Al Capone. Chicago is also known for architecture, for example the Sears Tower and museums. It is also known for its loyal sports fans. What to know traveling to Chicago 15 things to know before visiting Chicago Public transportation takes you everywhere. Venture cards are your best friend. Be prepared for the lake effect, with its chills and winds. Deep dish pizza isn't the only item on the menu. There are tons of things to do and see in the winter. World-class comedy is everywhere. Is two days enough for Chicago? For ambitious travelers, two days in Chicago is just enough time to see both whether you prefer Chicago 360 or the Sky Deck. We highly recommend purchasing a Chicago Cinepass, a bundle of Chicago's most popular attractions that will save your wallet while visiting Chicago. The best times to visit Chicago are April through May and between September and October, when the temperatures are warm. A variety of festivals take place and crowds are manageable. How many days should I spend in Chicago? How many days do you need in Chicago? Three to four days should be enough to see the top attractions in Chicago. However, depending on your interest and travel style, you can certainly spend a week in Chicago exploring the area and main tourist attractions. How much should I budget for food in Chicago? While meal prices in Chicago can vary, the average cost of food in Chicago is $37 per day. Based on the spending habits of previous travelers, when dining out an average meal in Chicago should cost around $15 per person. Breakfast prices are usually a little cheaper than lunch or dinner. Is December a good time to visit Chicago? Best time to visit Chicago for skipping the crowds. Winter is the least crowded time in Chicago. Hotel occupancy at its lowest in early December, January, and February. Though the weather is cold and often snowy, this is a perfect time to travel if you're interested in culture. Do you need a car in Chicago? So is a car necessary in Chicago? No, especially if you're visiting the city just for a short while. The city's trains and buses will get you just about anywhere. In fact, a lot of people are living in Chicago on a car, relying mainly on public transport. Chicago River The Chicago River is a system of rivers and canals with a combined length of 156 miles that runs through the city of Chicago, including its center. Is the Chicago River real river? Chicago River navigable stream that originally flowed into Lake Michigan after being formed by the north and south branches about one mile west of the lake in Chicago, northeastern Illinois, U.S. The Chicago River system flows 156 miles from Park City North to Lockport South some 45 bridges span. What is unique about the Chicago River? The river is the only river in the world to be reverse which is made to flow backwards in the opposite of its natural direction by civil engineering. Can you swim in the Chicago River? In short, Chicago area waterways is not designed for swimming. Indeed, many portions of the waterways were built specifically to be used as shipping canals or dock slips. But advocates of a swimmable river say that is just one more obstacle to overcome. Does the Chicago River freeze? The Chicago River doesn't completely freeze. Certain sections along the North Branch, for instance, freeze almost every year. If the surface of the main stem in downtown Chicago freezes, the city operates an icebreaker to free up the waterway for safety purposes. Millennium Park is a public park located in the Loop community area of Chicago in Illinois operated by the Chicago Department of Cultural Affairs and managed by MB Real Estate. The park was intended to celebrate the third millennium and is a prominent civic center near the city's Lake Michigan shoreline that covers a 24.5-acre section of Northwestern Grand Park. 
The area was previously occupied by Parkland, the Illinois Central's later Canadian National Railways, rail yards, and parking lots. The park, which is bounded by Michigan Avenue, Randolph Street, Columbus Drive, and East Monroe Drive, features a variety of public art. As of 2009, Millennium Park trailed only Navy Pier as a Chicago tourist attraction, and by 2017 it had become the number one tourist attraction in the Midwestern United States. In 2015, the park became the location of the city's annual Christmas tree lighting. Millennium Park has free admission and features the J. Pritzker Pavilion, Cloudgate, the Crown Fountain, the Lurie Garden, and various other attractions. Because the park sits atop a parking garage and the commuter rail Millennium Station, it is considered the world's largest rooftop garden. Millennium Park is open daily, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. The Millennium Park campus is the heart of Chicago. Locals and visitors alike gather here to picnic in the grass, cool off in the fountain, catch free concerts and movie screenings, and so much more all throughout the year. Cloudgate Cloudgate is a public sculpture made of stainless steel by Indian-born British artist Sir Anish Kapoor. That is the centerpiece of At and Plaza at Millennium Park in the Loop community area of Chicago, Illinois. The sculpture and At and T Plaza are located on top of Park Grill, between the Chase Promenade and McCormick Tribune Plaza and Ice Rink. This Indian-born British sculptor was already well known for his large-scale outdoor works, including several with highly reflective surfaces. Cloudgate was his first permanent public outdoor work in the United States, and it's widely considered his most famous. Can you touch the cloud gate? You can touch it, but if you touch it with a wet surface, you'll be there a while. The sculpture also will require some cleaning, but it's not known how often that will happen. People are obviously going to put their hands on it, visitors said. The grease from fingers will need to be wiped away. The cost for the piece was first estimated at $6 million. This had escalated to 11. $0.5 million by the time the park opened in 2004, with the final figure standing at $23 million in 2006. Navy Pier is a 3,300 feet long pier on the shoreline of Lake Michigan. Located in the Streeterville neighborhood of the near north side community area in Chicago, Illinois, United States. What is there to do at Navy Pier now? Have family fun with the kids at Navy Pier. Pretend you're pirates on tall ship when they cruises. Get a sugar rush at Navy Pier's Food Court. Learn and play at Chicago Children's Museum. Splash into summer at Paul Bros Park. Completed in 1916, Navy Pier is undeniably one of Chicago's top attractions. Stretching into Lake Michigan, this year-round destination truly comes to life in the summer, with fireworks displays, live music, theater, and cruises setting sail daily. Is Navy Pier free to get in? With lots of fun attractions and activities to enjoy all year long, there's always a reason to spend a day exploring the People's Pier. Navy Pier is free and open to the public year-round. To skip the ticket lines for ticketed events and attractions, buy tickets online before you arrive. Why is it called the Navy Pier? The pier experienced a name change this year. Municipal Pier was officially renamed Navy Pier in 1927 as a tribute to the Navy personnel who were housed at the pier during World War I. Navy Pier typically allows leash dogs in outdoor common areas only unless signs dictate otherwise. Only service animals are permitted inside Navy Pier. Soldier Field is an American football and soccer stadium located in the near south side of Chicago, Illinois, near downtown Chicago. It opened in 1924 and is the home field of the Chicago Bears of the National Football League, who moved there in 1971, and Chicago Fire FC of Major League Soccer. Is it safe to walk to Soldier Field? If you come out from an event from Soldier's Field, Walking among lots of other people are absolutely safe. If you come out alone, no events at night. Better not. There are a few spots along the way under the bridge you may not feel safe. Over a year ago, how much did it cost to make Soldier Field? Soldier Field was built in three stages between 1922 and 1939 at a total cost $13 million. Soldier Field, when completed, contains 74,280 permanent bleacher seats made of fur planking. The Field Museum of Natural History, also known as the Field Museum, is a natural history museum in Chicago, Illinois, and is one of the largest such museums in the world. The museum is a popular natural history museum for the size and quality of its educational and scientific programs, as well as due to its extensive scientific specimen and artifact collections. The hall is named for Stanley Field, nephew of founding museum benefactor Marshall Field. 
Stanley Field became president of the Field Museum in 1908, a role he held for 56 years. He was instrumental in relocating the museum to its present location. Field Museum opens renovated exhibit for one of the most famous dinosaur fossils, Sue, the largest, most complete, and best-preserved Tyrannosaurus rex ever unearthed. Gets to show off its new lair this week at the Field Museum in Chicago, Illinois. The Art Institute of Chicago and Chicago's Grant Park, founded in 1879, is one of the oldest and largest art museums in the world. Recognized for its curatorial efforts and popularity among visitors, the museum hosts approximately 1.5 million people annually. The Chicago Theater was the first large, lavish movie palace in America and was the prototype for all others with 3,600 seating capacity. This beautiful movie palace was constructed for $4 million by theater owners Barney and Abe Balaban and Sam and Morris Katz and designed by Cornelius and George Rapp. Does Chicago have a good nightlife? Chicago, though the Windy City boasts a fair number of rooftop lounges, swanky hotel bars, and booming clubs, most locals prefer a more late, back night out at a neighborhood bar over a crowded party. Can I walk around Chicago at night? Chicago is one of the best cities to take a nighttime stroll. There are many places to take a nighttime stroll in Chicago.